Hello, everyone. I'm Xuan Fan from Fudan University. Today, I'd like to introduce our paper, An Ever-Evolving Game, Evaluation of Real-World Attacks and Defenses in Ethereum Ecosystem. This is a work with Zhe Minyang, Jie Xiang, Ying Zhicao from Johns Hopkins University, Minyang, and Yuan Zhang. From its day of birth, the security of smart contract has drawn many attentions, and several incidents such as the DAO attack and the parity wallet hack has caused millions of dollars losses. Since then, many works have been proposed to locate vulnerabilities in smart contract code. For example, OEANT, Securify, Zeus contract further has reported thousands of vulnerable contracts. However, a recent report from Paris and Lipschitz shows that only about 2% of this contract at most are really attacked. So clearly there's a gap exists between vulnerable contracts and real-world attacks. In this paper, we try to fill this gap by answering two questions. What contract has been attacked and what attack has been prevented? To find the real-world attack, we focus on the transaction instead of the contract code. We try to recognize attack transactions from normal ones based on their behavior and the consequences they caused. So the task of this paper is to examine all the transactions in Ethereum, and this leads to our main challenge. How to effectively examine all the 420 million transactions in Ethereum from August 2015 to March 2019? And we propose a transaction log-based analysis to do that. Our measurement workflow is shown like this. We first collected all the traces of each transaction, each traces depicts the inter-contract behavior of a transaction. We use these traces to build two special structure, action tree and result graph. Action tree is an ordered tree-like structure which shows the behavior of a transaction. And the result graph shows the consequences it caused, such as the Ether transfer, token transfer, or contract ownership changes. We manually generate signature from collected real-world attacks and use them to match the action tree and result graph and locate adversarial transaction. Actually, not every attack succeeds, so we further ask, what defenses cause the failure of these attacks? And our defense analysis tries to answer the question. We do this by locating the code snaps which stop the attacks. Finally, we determine whether the defenses we found has been evaded by real-world attacks. We use an airdrop hunting example to demonstrate our method. Airdrop hunting attack is an under-investigated kind of attack. The airdrop mechanism is used by many ERC-20 token contracts to attract users. They award the newcomer with some tokens called uh, the airdrop. The vulnerability here is that it, uh, the contract determines the identity of user with a message sender, uh, while an attacker can easily deploy a contract and automatic, automatically generates many bot contracts to collect many airdrops. We show the traces of a single transaction, uh, attack transaction here. The attacker first used a controller contract to generate 50 bot contracts, and each of them then called the transfer function of the victim contract to collect airdrop and transfer airdrop back to the controller. We first construct the action tree based on the addresses of each trace. The address shows the invocation order of trace. Then we annotate action tree with detailed information, such as the function they call, the parameters they use, and the type of them. Uh, there is three kinds of, uh, there are three type of traces, the call type, which calls the function, and the create type, which creates a contract and the suicide, which this deconstruct the contract and the transfer all the remain ether inlets to the death to the destination. In results graph, we focus on three kinds of consequences. First we 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 focus the ether transfer, which can be known from the value of each trace. Then we concern about the token transfer, which can be recognized from the code function. 
because many uh, all the ERC20 contracts use predefined functions to transfer tokens. In this case, we concern about the transfer function. And third, we concern about the ownership changes, which is achieved, achieved by calling functions such as the set owner. And we show the, the signature to recognize the airdrop pointing attack. The signature is consisted of action clause and the result clause. The action clause of, a, of an airdrop pointing attack is that a contract first creates more than one contract, each of which further calls a token transfer function. And the result clause is that all the created contracts transfer collected tokens back to the controller. There are more signatures for other types of attack in our paper. Please refer to our paper. If a transaction matches the action clause, we say that it behaves like an attack and it's an attempted adversarial transaction. Then if it further matches the results clause, we know that it really caused some losses and we call it a confirmed adversarial transaction. Also, many attempted transactions failed to cause any losses because of some of its traces are reverted. For example, airdrop pointing attacks may fail to collect airdrop due to some defenses. We show such two defenses against airdrop pointing. The first, check the code length of, of a user. If a human sends a transaction, his code length is zero. While if a bot contract sends a this transaction, its code length is larger than zero. So, so the, its human defense can be used to check the, whether the, the user is a human or a bot contract. Unfortunately, this defense can be evaded. So another defense is to check the transaction origin instead of the message sender. In our attack example, the transaction origin is always the controller contract. Our observation here is that defenses are implemented with special functions like require and assert on certain variable. And we recognize the defense deployed in contract by locating such security checks that cause the failure of attacks. Then we ev evaluate the false positive and false negative of our method. We manually evaluate the false positive rates of our method. We managed to do that because Many contract and transaction are exactly the same. Our false positive rate is very low. Only about 0.3% of transaction we recognize are false positive. And we finally locate over 100,000 attacks. We filtered the false positive results in the following measurement. Since there is no benchmarking real world attack, we evaluate the false negative by sampling the vulnerable contract re reported by six previous work and check whether they are attacked. The false positive or the false negative all comes from our honeypot recognition. Finally, we lo locate six kind of defenses. We explain the reason of successful evasion in our paper. And our conclusion here is that most of these, these defense are effective when correctly deployed, and we recommend the contract developer to use them. I present some important results here, and please refer to our paper for more. From our results, only about 0.25% of vulnerable contracts in six previous work are really attacked. On the other hand, we found that attack against 344 contracts, which have been never been, uh, which has never been reported by previous work and open source tools. They are missing due to low code coverage and lacking of inter-contract data flow analysis. Also, we conduct a conservative, conservative estimation of losses of all the attack we found. Apart from the well-known incidents, the rest losses are far less than expected. And among them, the airdrop hunting attack we reported in this paper caused the most losses. Here is our advice. We have ob observed an attack strategy shift over time, and we suggest that the committee should keep looking for new attack strategies 
adopted by adversarials and keeping pace with corresponding detection and defenses.